Adam, I, I want to start with this notion of guardrails and Trump's act of bending institution. What are we in for if Trump can really just rely on his handpicked judges? Well, I think the issue here is that people expect the judiciary to be a check on the executive branch. Um, and because the conservative legal movement has been reshaped in Trump's image, uh, these judges are unlikely to resist that ideological project. Uh, and to some extent, you know, much of that ideological project predates Trump himself. He is simply a convenient vehicle for its use. Right. And looking forward, you argue that this problem will compound in a second term, that he'll appoint even more judges who can look favorably on his authoritarianism. What might that look like? Well, to some extent, you know, the conservative legal movement, like much of the country, was taken by surprise by Trump's victory in 2016. And so they didn't have all of their ducks in a, in a row the way that they do now. Uh, the entire conservative movement, including the conservative legal movement, is now prepared to take full advantage of another four years of Trump in the White House. And that means uh, a judiciary that is uh, unlikely uh, to check Trump's efforts to concentrate power in himself, as I said. Molly, we mentioned the gag order in Trump's election interference case in its ruling. The federal appeals court wrote, quote, the record shows that Trump's words have real world consequences. Many of those on the receiving end of his attacks pertaining to the 2020 election have been subjected to a torrent of threats and intimidation from his supporters. Molly, what do we need to understand about the scope of this threat and those willing to, you know, tag along for a second Trump term? Yeah, I mean, I think it's pretty, the idea of a second Trump term is pretty bleak. And I think that there's just a lot of the the things Trump didn't know how to do the first time, he now knows how to do. And we sort of see that he's kind of giving us clues. For example, that interview recently that in, during that CNN town hall, when Hannity was begging him to say he wasn't going to be an autocrat. And then he said, except on day one. So. I do think we're really seeing it in him a lot of, you know, the clues. And he's sort of gotten better at being an autocrat. I mean, remember, he was originally a reality television host. And so I do think that the stakes are much higher. And again, what Liz Cheney said is really true. There is There are no adults in the room anymore. It's just... Stephen Miller's and a lot of people like that. See, I mean, Adam, here's the thing, which is we talk about the judiciary, and sometimes it is easy to imagine that that is somehow separate and apart from policy when they are very much intertwined. On Friday, a federal judge banned the Trump era practice of separating migrant families at the U.S. border for eight years. The AP reports, quote, under a settlement, the type of zero tolerance policy under which the Trump administration separated more than 5,000 children from parents who were arrested for illegally entering the country would be prohibited until December 2031. Adam, first, just your reaction to that settlement, given the, the reporting that you have done on what happened under Trump's immigration policies, and to bring us back to the point about the courts, your confidence that rulings like that one would stand in a potential second Trump term? Well, obviously, the family separation policy was adopted to inflict suffering on children so that their parents would be less likely uh, to try to bring them to the United States for a better life. Uh, and it, it didn't work because... Uh, you know, think about it. If you're a parent, you will do literally anything to give your child that chance. Uh, and so they, even despite having a cruel policy in place like that, you're still going to attempt to do what you can to save your child's life and give them the best chance you possibly can. As far as, you know, as far as Trump obeying court rulings, Trump flirted with defying the courts uh, you know, when he was president, he obviously tried to overturn constitutional government by remaining in power after he lost an election. I think uh, should Trump win a second term, they're going to be he and a lot of the people around him are going to advise him that he simply does not have to obey uh, court orders that he disagrees with.